Hey drummers, it's Rob Litton here from drumstheword.com. Welcome to this free mini song lesson. This song was requested over on my Facebook page, and so if you want to make your own song suggestions, then please go over there to do so. You'll find a link to the page beneath this video. I'm currently asking for the month of December for my Facebook followers to make their song suggestions, including Christmas classics. This month of December, I want to do a load of freebies, so here's one of my first freebies of the month. The song I'm going to teach you today is the main drum beat from the song Tusk by Fleetwood Mac, of course, drummed by Mick Fleetwood. I've got the free PDF for this lesson, which you can download from my website. You'll find a link for this free PDF beneath this video as well. So have this printed out in front of you as we go through this together. I've got the actual album version, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But they've also, because um, the song has changed over the years, I've noticed when they've been playing it live, I've got a live version they sometimes play. Well, two different live versions they play. So you've got the album version, the live version, which is definitely different, and another live version. So between the three, you sort of got an idea of what, what Mick is playing uh, and why so many drummers on YouTube, for example, seem to cover this differently to each other because they've heard different versions or seen different versions of this. Anyway, the album version is what it is, and it took me a while to sort of really decide what I was hearing because um, um, it sounds really simple. Um, it's, it sounds like you want to play more tom notes, but I don't think there are. I think what Mick, done on, Mick has done on the recording is, is play a very minimalistic tom part so that the rest of the band, especially when the brass section kicks in later, really takes centre stage, the drums aren't filling up all the spaces. So I think Mick has come up with a, quite a simple um, but, but technically tricky um, pattern to play. Uh, what I think he's doing is he's using, using three toms and we've got this really deep bass drum note on the quarter notes. One, two, three, four. It sounds like it might be the floor tom and bass drum together, but I don't think it is because the sticking I'm about to show you doesn't allow to move to the floor tom rather easily. I think it's just a really big, powerful bass drum he's using, and that's what gives that big note every quarter note. One E and a two and B and a four and... So if we take a look at our first um, version, example, the, uh, the drum beat from the beginning of the song, I think what he's playing is this, one, E, and, uh, and you can hear the toms go that pitch, a higher pitch, then back down to the original pitch, and then you get the bass drum, the lowest pitch, following afterwards, one, E, and, uh, two. So it's kind of like a linear pattern, a little bit tricky to play smoothly because you've got notes falling in the row there that are separated. One, E, and, uh, two. One E and a two. Then for the second um, part, for the and of two, um, I believe he moves down to the floor tom and, the, and his highest tom to play the and of two. It could be these two toms. It really doesn't matter what two toms you use as long as that and is played louder. So I think he's playing this. One E and a two and the E and a four and. You can see both halves of the bar are the same. One E and a two and the E and a four and one E and a two. That's the bare down basic minimum you hear on the recording. Um, it's, uh, it could be um, that he's playing a bass uh, floor tom, like I say, on, on the downbeat, but it means you have to then come up to the tom in a weird, weird way. Rushing, I don't think Mick would, would do that. Um, so I think it's just the bass drum playing on its own. If you wanted to put the, the floor tom on the um, bass drum, then we've got the next live version, well the live version I'm going to show you next, which, which allows you to do that, and which, which Mick certainly did when you played it live. So before we go to the live version, or oh, before, before we show you up to speed, let me just also mention that later in the song, halfway through when the brass band kicks in, I am hearing him playing um, um, one E and a two. I think it's all just on one tom for the second half of the song. It could be that, going back to the high tom or floor tom. It's really hard to hear the pitch of the toms, but I think he, I'm just hearing for the second half of the song, one E and a two, where we just get one tom, one E and a two, and then that same accent pattern on the, on the end of uh, two and four for the, each of the bars. So let's go back to the, the um, version here at the beginning of the song, the most definitive version. Let's hear that up to speed, develop the microphone so you can hear just the drums. Here we go.
So this next example is uh, an example I saw them. Um, I saw Mick play live on one of the YouTube performances, um, and uh, we get this um, hi hat foot being stepped on the end of each beat. Our feet are playing this one and two and three and four, which is a nice little pattern for the feet to be playing over the top of a, of a cool tom rhythm. One and two and and again the first half of the bar is the same as the second half. This time, I think he's playing, um, um, well, you see him play it, he's definitely playing this, between just two toms, he doesn't move between two different toms, we get one E and a two and, let's leave out the feet for now, we're just playing right, left, right, left, right, both, right, left, right, left, right, both, that's all he's doing there, the, the version I see him live, with the feet underneath, one E and a two and, the E and a four and, one E and a two and, the E and a four and one E and a two and the E and a four and one E and This pattern is obviously a lot easier to play than the linear version live so he probably did that on purpose so it wouldn't be so many mistakes. Also when they play it live they've got lots and lots of backing parts, uh, extra musicians who are adding extra tom notes um, so Mick had the opportunity to lay back the drum beat um, and let the percussionists perhaps accent certain notes a bit more than him on his drum kit. It's all about clever um, um, performance where They've, they've taken the album version, they're going, how, how can we perform this live, make it sound like the live, uh, the re recorded version or change it. And um, so they've added um, uh, percussionists. And so Mick was able to sort of hold back a little bit more and not play all the notes because the percussionists are helping with it. Anyway, so let's hear that um, first part. I'll call it live version part one because he then goes into a second part and a second later in the song. Let's hear that up to speed first of all. So the second part um, is exactly the same as the first part, but now he just moves to the snare drum. Now, I, I watch Mick play it, and he's, he, he likes to play the right hand move to the snare drum. So we get exactly the same pattern, one the and a two, but instead of playing and, he plays and. That's all it is. You could play and, instead you could play one the and a two and, and, and keep that right hand on the floor tom, and your left hand plays the snare drum. But what I see Mick do live is he plays it this way around. But you could play. It's up to you how, how you want to play it. But like I say, I hear Mick play. So we got the first part. Then we get the um, after the little drum solo, which, by the way, is just if you want to um, uh, know what he's playing, it's just play lots of notes really, really fast. He's not playing in time in that that, that rather messy drum solo he does. Um, he's playing some triplet ideas. I think he plays. Stuff like that, where he's, he's doubling up on the, the tom. Anyway, he's just playing the notes as fast as he can. And when you see him play it live, it's a different drum solo each time. Usually on the snare drum. Just, just, he just goes for it on the snare drum and just, just play some crazy stuff. So now let's hear the um, second part played up to speed uh, without the microphone on. And then finally, the um, other, uh, I call it the older live version. This is what they used to play right at the beginning when they were first touring this song. Um, and this really is um, held back. And I, I had to double check what I was seeing. I couldn't believe that um, uh, Mick was playing this. But this is what I was seeing, this is what I was hearing. And like I said earlier on, it's the rest of the band, the percussionists, adding over the top. So Mick is really holding back with this drum beat so that um, the uh, percussionists can do the rest for him and put the, the extra sounds over the top. So. All I'm hearing is quarter notes. He, changed the, he, he does change the hi-hat pattern sometimes, different live versions. Now he's playing one E and a, in this version I've seen, and he's just playing 16th notes, one E and a two E, between two different toms. Simple as that, just constant 16th notes. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and... And on the and of two, where we get that before, now we're just accenting with the right hand. One E and a two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Two and the four and one, two and the four and one. Is that tempo is it? But they usually play it a little bit faster live. But that's it. That's the other version I hear Mick playing, and that would work 
just as well, I guess. If you're just playing it on your own, it might sound a bit weird, but with the rest of the band, perhaps you've got some percussionists, then it's gonna really work. So there's, uh, let's, let's hear that version, for complete sake, up to speed. So there you go, hope you find that useful and fun. You've got the album version. You've got a live version. Second part. And you've got the older live version, which is just weird. And I wouldn't recommend playing, but so I, I, I did it just for a bit of fun. Okay, so if you've got any questions about any of that, email me, robertdrumstheword.com. Don't forget to download the free PDF that came with this lesson. You'll find a link beneath this video. And you might want to consider signing up to become an online member at my website. And what I currently offer for $97 is a full year's online access to every single full video song lesson I've ever recorded and transcribed. I say over 400 famous and popular songs on the website already. Unlike this lesson where I just teach you the main parts, in my full lessons I teach you every single bar from start to finish. You get the fully transcribed PDF drum chart. And I've got over 400 famous and popular songs on the website already, including a few other Fleetwood Mac songs as well. Full song lessons from start to finish. So you've got some um, Fleetwood Mac stuff to be getting on with on the, on the website already. As a thank you for signing up, I give you access to hundreds of little videos teaching you many, many famous drum beats, fills, and even drum solos. I give you three eBooks I've written over the years containing hundreds more famous drum beats, fills, and solos. Then over the year of your subscription, from the day you sign up, you get instant online access to all the new material that I upload for my members. And I record every week unless I'm ill or on holiday. So you've got lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the year of your subscription. But if you've got any questions about any of that, feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. And let's our next drum lesson together. Toodle pip, and happy drumming to you.